plan in less than 14 years system for a while now. What are kind of the responsibilities for the whole side? Do they differ from other teams and other systems? Nah, um, for me, uh, the coach doesn't have to give me the, like, the responsibility, you know, the job of a point guard for me. Um, you know, when I was in, when I was started as a child, my dad, you know, you know, put the responsibilities on me as a point guard. And then as I got older, high school coach, um, Skip, Dino, Jeff Battle, they stayed on me at Wake Forest. So I've tried to keep that, you know, with me. And, and so I know the responsibilities of it. And so for me, it's just always reading the game. Um, I think so many times I can think of like two instances, the Cleveland game and then the Houston game. Uh, to me, um, you know, you don't have to, in those situations when I specifically think about it, um, you know, you got to get good shots. Um, and, and the last three or four minutes are important to, to know the plays to run. You might see a play in the first half that you might seen it work and you might want to keep it in your back pocket and just play out of flow. So when it comes down to like those last three minutes, you can pull that play back out your pocket. Um, so uh, for coach, his responsibilities are the same as every other coach I've had. Um, it's a big responsibility. And that's why I tell people all the time, like it's a lot of guys masquerading as point guards. Like it just is, cause it's, it's a thinking man's job. And um, you know, sometimes people get frustrated and they see scoring and different things like that. But, you know, I, I always say it, Skip used to always tell us, you don't criticize success, you analyzing it. Look at Chris Paul, he's a throwback point guard and he got Phoenix rolling. Um, so it is a it is a thinking man's job. Don't get me wrong, I love the scoring. And I love those those two guards who can really score and make plays for other people. Um, but you know, coach, coach Unsell puts a huge responsibility on it, and it's a responsibility that that uh that you can handle. And, you know, specifically, I think myself can handle and and so you just kind of read and trying to figure out throughout the game, kind of playing with pace. It's reading the game, and a lot of people don't read it. Sometimes you get in those instances, like I said, the Cleveland Houston game, where you slow the whole game down. Uh, and that's on me. You don't slow the whole game down. You keep playing. That don't mean you come down and take quick shots. You just keep down and we keep coming down and we play in flow, whatever our flow is at that moment. Uh, could be open, could be swing, whatever the case is, to where we get the ball from side to side and we get a good shot. That's kind of settling the gym down. Uh, it's not always slowing it down, running a play, because uh, that can take time. You only got 24 seconds on the shot clock. Um, so, um, you know, the, the responsibility is great, and uh, it's it's just like any other coach. So, as much as the position may evolve, like as much as like other positions are completely changed, like Cleveland, you know, right, right. The principles of being a point guard is maintaining ultimately the same throughout your your life. Heck yeah. Like it, it, you, you have to be able to make plays for others. Um, you got to be able to score um, uh, when, when it needs to be done. And then you got to read the game. Sometimes you got to just spot up and allow somebody else to, to run the offense or run the, run the uh, play. So it's really reading the game, the pace of the game, the flow of the game. If you're playing against a team that likes to play fast, uh, that doesn't mean you run with them. But what you do is you play at your pace. Um, if you like it, it's a team that like to play slow, then you pick up the pace and you play a little faster. I think people think fast is erratic. No, it just means that you're playing with pace and with a flow. And, and so it's it's all about reading the game. Um, and to me, like sometimes you can slow the whole gym down and the game down, but that can be difficult, you know, in a flow of a game. Um, and, and, you know, like coach said, I remember we was in Houston. He can't use all his time out. So in those situations and moments, it's a responsibility of the point guard to be like, yo, we're good. It's the look, it's the the flow of the game. It's the I always say this. People go through highs and lows in their emotions. It's calming everybody's emotions down, knowing every everything's okay. You gotta be the common, you're the quarterback. You gotta be the common effect when everybody's going up and down in their personality and their and their emotions. So it's a lot to it. Um and uh the great ones, you know, the Magics, Isaiah, um, you know, uh, you know, CP, uh, Steph is special. You know, all those guys, they, they have a way of doing it. Um, and, and I like the new age point guards. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I'm, I'm a little bit of a throwback. The uh, Clippers lost, which you weren't here for. They gave up a 35-point lead. Yeah. 
West had the entire had the team watch the entire second half of it. Uh, was there a similar film session after the, the Rockets? No, sir. Um, it wasn't. Uh, coach just came over to our offensive cleanups, our defensive cleanups. Uh, you know, coach is really good at reading the room, the flow. Um, you know, everybody's personality. And uh, I think everybody kind of beat themselves up in that game, uh, knowing that that was a – we was up 24, end up losing by, what, 18? That's what's that? Uh, let me do my math. 24 is 34, 42-point turnaround. Yeah. Um, so, I just, you know, in those situations, you got to kind of play the way you, you know, got the lead. Uh, but it's – it's so organized, chaotic, you know, like we were playing in that first half. It wasn't erratic or crazy. Uh, Houston plays with a pace and a flow and an aggressiveness. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on your one-on-one -on -one defense. Um, put a lot of pressure on you in general because you don't know where shots are coming from, how they're going to get done, whatever the case is. Um, so, um, you know, that's in those situations where, like I said, you calm it down come down in your flow, move the ball from side to side, and um, calm the gym down when it gets crazy. I know you guys are not out there, but how are you approaching the last one? Yeah, um, let me try to say it in a nice way. Uh, <laughs> now, you know what? For me, every time that ball bounces, I give it 120%. And that's the thing that I want anybody that watches me play to see like he he goes out there and he gives you everything he has um you know obviously I'm thankful Lord has blessed me with a gift so I enjoy to play the game um and hopefully you guys see that joy out there on the floor but I'm gonna give it everything I got so for me things doesn't change you know I'm gonna give it all um you know obviously a little disappointed that we're not out of it you know statistically but um you know, who knows? We can make a crazy run and go 11 in a row. Uh, anything's possible. Um, but for me, it's just every day, like you said, like just coming in, giving everything you got. You know, these fans, D.C. and, and people around the league, they play their, their hard-earned money. And so uh, it's our job to give them everything we have and give them the gift that we've been blessed with. And uh, so I'm, my, my mindset doesn't change. Um, continue to play the same way and you know, it always works out at the end. How do you want um, the young guys, Denny, Torian, Willie, take advantage of something? Yeah, same way. You you got to like, and this is the thing people don't understand, like you have to give it all. You know, so many retired players that, you know, I play with, and the thing that they always want to come back to play you know, your body doesn't hold up. Like, surgeons can go for – lawyers can go for – but when you play this sport, you have a small window. Um, and I've been blessed to play 12 years and counting. And so, some people didn't make it to 12 years. Some people didn't make it to eight years. And so, every time you hit that floor, um, you have to give it all because uh, somebody's watching you play that might have never watched you play. And that might inspire them to – be an NBA player or to be at your level and they come up to you when they're older and be like, I remember watching you play and now you're watching them play or now your children are playing with them. So, um, you know, you, you always can get better. Um, they're so young. And I think the game of basketball, you can always get better. There's no ceiling on how, uh, you know, unless you're making every shot and nobody out here is making every shot. So um, I think, you can always get better, and, and those guys will continue to develop and get better. And I think throughout this year, last year, um, they just continue to get better. So that's that's something for them. They can continue to grow on, and it's our job to, you know, continue to push them for them to get better. Speaking of Curry making every shot, well, not making every shot, but really his three-point shooting is 50%. Yeah. So what do you think of that? Yeah, Rui, man. He's special, man. I'm telling you, I, uh, you know, Rui, I had him when I was young, and so – uh, when he was young, I'm sorry, his first year. And so remember he came in, it was mid-range, 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 and everybody was begging him to improve his three-point shooting. And he worked really hard with Coach Gory Gaines. Um, and now, like, 
it's really not anything on the floor. Like he, we already know he's an unbelievable mid-range shooter. Now he's shooting 50% from three-point line. He's really good on post-ups, mismatches, finishing it uh, in face-ups. So Rui, he's got a lot of skill. He's got a lot of skill and he's just tapping into it. about playing fast, obviously, you know, how long have you been fast? Like, were you always the fastest kid? And where's your, uh, where's your speed come from? Is there, like, somewhere in your family? Yeah, from? The Lord. <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 um, I have a cousin, Alicia Ganey. She, um, she ran track for UNC Charlotte. She was actually really good and then transferred to Western Carolina. She's fast. Um, she's really fast, actually. Um, so, Maybe, you know, some genes down the line as far as speed. But other than that, like, I, I have always been the fastest. Um, I was blessed with speed. Uh, the Lord truly blessed me with speed, and I try to utilize it as much as I can. So, yeah, I've always been the fastest. Um, and people don't understand, like, playing with speed is one thing. Playing with speed and control is another thing. And that's another thing that I was blessed with. A lot of people can play fast. They just play fast and out of control. <laughs> um, you know, I would like to think that I have some sense of control. Um, half the time when you guys are watching me play, I don't know what I'm doing out there, but it works. So, uh, you know, it's an anointing, so I'm blessed. All right, Ish, we'll switch over to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Josh. Ish, as, as you've just demonstrated, you know what it takes to handle the ball. And uh, I'm curious how you would evaluate the way Denny does it and makes plays because he seems to be getting much many more opportunities lately to do that. Yeah, Denny, Denny's getting better at it. Uh, I heard overseas he was really good at it. So, uh, you know, he has a lot of different aspects on the floor that he can thrive at. And I think coaches trying to tap into those areas, whether it's in pick and rolls, whether it's spot up shooting, uh, whether it's playing off the catch and go uh, defensively. So he has a lot of, you know, attributes out there on the floor. And I think um, they're kind of coming out slowly but surely, like out there on the floor. And I think coach is trying to tap into it. Uh, he was really good in pick and rolls against Houston um, in the first half. And, um, and he was really good against Denver, pick and rolls. Um, so he, he has the ability to, to handle the ball and make some plays. And um, so he'll just continue to get better. Um, so. In terms of his height, uh, how, how much of an advantage does that give him, uh, assuming that all other things are equal, like the ability to, to control the ball deftly? Yeah, no, like size is, is uh, important. It's crazy because it used to be a time back in the days where you get a kid that was like 6'9", it, like, it was like impressive. Now when I walk into the league, everybody's got four 6'9", dudes. Like it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, what are they feeding the kids? Maybe I just came out at the wrong time, but, uh, uh, but, but it, it really does help. Uh, you know, I, I seem to make a move, um, on Dennis and Dennis is a really good defender Schroeder and, uh, he just used his strength off the, uh, dribble handoff, um, and was able to just see over him and, and finish over top of him. So, uh, in those aspects and those things, he on switches, um, on, you know, when you're driving baseline and, and you can see over a defender, see over the big man, uh, you know, it's really, it's really impressive, um, you know, and he continues to grow. He continues to get better. And like I said, um, it's six, nine, uh, it's a huge advantage. Thank you very much, Ish. And I'm yes, saying sir. that is a five foot seven and a half person. So thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> and a half, I get, yeah, I'd like to have you put it. We'll go to Christos. Hey, Ish, hope you're doing well. Uh, you, in the last couple of games, you had the great game against the Lakers, a great first half against the Rockets, and a bad second half against the Rockets. How could you describe those ups and downs on the way that you play? Yeah, man, I'm going to be honest with you. The Houston game, I was frustrated because for me, how can I explain this, Christos? Like, so for me, like, um, I looked at the turnover I had and then like the two, the two missed shots um, I wasn't happy about. Uh, but for me, like it's, it's a flow in the game. And it's, 
it's easier to kind of like think about it. It's hard to explain. And so for me, I get a little frustrated because you feel the pulse of the game and you know what you can do to help your team. Um, but, you know, in those situations and moments, you know, you whatever you were thinking, it didn't come out on the floor. Uh, so for me, you don't get too high. You don't get too low. I've been in this league for 12 years, Christos. You just keep chopping away. But you evaluate your game. Uh, I'm not one to be like, man, like, oh, I'm going to just turn the page. No, nah, heck no. Nah. Like, I watched the tape in the second half of Houston and was like, oh, okay, I see where I can explore it. I knew it, see where I can be aggressive in those moments and those situations. And so you grow from them and um, try not to make the same mistake twice. If you see it again, uh, the game, you watch film, but you might not ever see that situation ever again. Uh, but you watch film to see if that moment comes up, you know, how to be, you know, be aggressive. Uh, but you just got to kind of flow and play and uh, get better, you know, game by game. And, and so put two halves together and, and try to, you know, move from there. And does a playmaker of this team, seeing the progress, the, the progress and the growth uh, this team uh, made as, this, as the game goes on, see, seeing the, the potential that your team ha has and the young players that you, the, your young teammates, how, how confident do you feel about the future of this, uh, of this group? I feel very confident. Um, I think skill-wise, um, we got a lot of skill. Um, and so now what you have to do is take the skill, the heart, the will that Coach West has inside of him, and we have to take that to the floor and sustain it for 48 minutes. Uh, you see flashes of it for 24 minutes, uh, for 36 minutes, uh, for 40 minutes. Um, you know, even the Lakers game, we won that game, but Christos, let's be honest, like we didn't play well the first half. Um, and actually we didn't play well until about the middle of the third. And then we looked like a team that was that, that, you know, people that the fans could be excited about and the, and the future is very, very bright. So, uh, it's just sustaining it, um, you know, over a 48 minute time. Well, I think he uh, offensively, uh, we started stagnating a bit. You know, had a 13 assists, I believe, in that first half, or, or 19 rather, and only five in the second. And some of that you, know, you couple with making shots. So I get that part, but uh, just not getting bored with the process um, where we generated easy offense, you know, early in the first quarter. Um, saw it dip a little bit in the second. Uh, in the third quarter, I thought we got away from it. Uh, part of it was because we, we, we didn't get the payoff. Um, you know, from, you know, sustaining how we played those first quarter, quarter and a half. Um, and then you, you, you fight that temptation where it's like, all right, well, I got to do more. Not, not necessarily. I think in, individually, um, we just have to stay with what we're doing, stay with what works, um, and just understand the law of averages will come back to us. How was Kyle feeling? Uh, he, he did. Uh, he was a partial participant. Um, I think what we'll list him is still questionable for uh, tomorrow. Um, but I think he's he's progressing, so it's it's a good thing. Um, I don't think it's anything serious, but um, I, just to make sure he's he's good and comfortable, you know, being out there, I think it's important. Um, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I'm I'm mo most likely I'm doubtful. Uh, that's my opinion, <laughs> but um, I'm still hopeful that you know that things can progress and it'll uh, be clear. And, um, how beneficial have the last two weeks? Uh, I think it's a great part. Uh, it's a good part about it. I mean, I know it's it's tough when you don't have one of your better players out there um, in Kyle, but you know, really stepped up and you, you had a great start the other night. Um, I think it's good good experience regardless. He's been a starter before, so I don't think it's anything he's not accustomed to. Um, getting his minute threshold up is important to see where he, he is, and also you know, those. You know, cr crunch moments. I think any opportunity you can have young players out there in critical junctures of the game, uh, there's exponential growth. And you can't simulate those minutes and, and, and those opportunities. So, with you starting, um, I guess it just has to be more mindful of time with the foul right now. That's a big piece, you know, and once again, if you're guarding marquee, marquee matchups, which he will, um, being able to defend without fouling 
you know, not only keeps you on the floor, um, but it, it, it puts us behind the eight ball a lot. Well, we've talked about that at length, and I thought overall did a decent job against Houston, knowing that they were at that point number one free throw shooting team as far as attempts. And, you know, we only fouled 13, but, you know, the, some of those fouls are, were in inopportune times. Um, early in the game, you can't, you know, foul and take yourself out of the game, but also, you know, allow the, your opponent to parade to the line. Well, you know, I compared it, but I also made the point, though, it, it was a different group. You know, obviously we were a different team, but we've seen, unfortunately, we've seen, you know, some of this um, from quarter to quarter. It's not necessarily a whole half. Um, we, we watched, uh, you know, about 20 min minutes of film, not necessarily the whole half but uh, certain segments, but also just clips. And the biggest piece, you know, as far as trying to find ways to sustain our play is understanding the flow, um, especially offensively. You know, the defensive stuff is, is pretty cut and dry. Our transition defense was poor. Some of that was bad shots, um, broken possessions, turnovers. Um, and the other piece was, you know, offensively. You know, we can't stagnate. Ball's got to move. Uh, we got to make sure we stay organized. Um, but showing all those things aren't unique to just Houston. We've had issues at times uh, in, in some of those areas. Um, and how do we, you know, minimize some of those runs? Well, take those empty possessions out. Um, it doesn't, might not seem like a big deal in the moment, but when you have three or four of those situations, you couple it with a, you know, bad foul, um, now a turnover, th those things really start to add up. Once they stack up, you end up in, in a 11-2 run. Um, and we've seen that at times, and we're trying to find ways to minimize it. I don't think so. Um, I think in general, just, you know, reading the flow of the game, understanding, you know, how teams are guarding us. Uh, also, you know, understanding makes and misses, opportunities to push after a stop where you know, there's no clear cut advantage. Let's, let's get our guys organized and, and, and spatially uh, organized, get guys to spots before we initiate the offense. Um, and then also reading kind of, all right, the guy's got a flow, he's got a rhythm. You know, how do I get certain guys a shot in the spots that, uh, that they're most efficient? Do you, uh, like the lack of steals, I guess, carry over to turnovers uh, in relation to your defense? Is that something that you wish you guys did more of, or is that not necessarily an indicator? I don't necessarily know it's it, if there's a correlation between deflections. Now, you could maybe say steals, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't know if it means you, know, you can gamble and take yourself out of position. I don't know if that's good for us is, you know, on, on the flip side. Um, I think the most important thing is the hand activity. So now that teams aren't just, you know, window shopping and, and picking us apart, I think we can do a better job there. But in, in particular with pick and rolls, it's, it's difficult with, uh, with us being more in drop coverage. You're not going to have the same level of impact as you would if we're up to touch or blitzing. Um, but, you know, I think overall, you know, the, the overall hand activity is something that's controllable. Um, more concerned with that and less gambling for steals. What's the, the process been like lately trying to get the defensive message to stick? Because I know earlier in the season you said, well, we put points here the first, you know, 10, 13 games. And since that's kind of further in, in the, the background, kind of what's it been like just trying to get the same principles to stick? Well, I think the principles are in place. Uh, we just, we have a lot of different parts. Um, people forget Rui missed 30 plus games, didn't have training camp. So he's still kind of getting himself up to speed with, with different coverages. Um, it, it's easy when, you know, we're switching one through four. We, we've done a lot of that with him. Um, but now, you know, if, if he, we start off the season, you know, with our bigs in coverage, both bigs. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, another layer for him now. That we want to minimize the switching versus our big wings. You know, your Giannis's, your LeBron's. Um, you know, guys of that nature. Um, so it's just another area where he's just got to get up to speed. And it's not just him. You know, it's Kyle. It's Rui, uh, Denny, rather. All those guys, um, you know, an added layer to the defense. Um, you know, adding KP, there's another layer. So it's no excuse, but nothing's really changed, you know, schematically. It's just guys having enough reps. Speaking of support 
think it's uh, you know get a good first pass against the Rockets, but often generally struggles uh, in second half. Um, what was different about him? Did they do something different to him? And what do you think in hindsight they would have done? Okay. No, I think you know they they were switching quite a bit. Um, and we didn't necessarily reap the benefit of the post ups uh, that we got the other night. Uh, but once again, you know, when that doesn't work, you know, I thought when we started to stagnate, you know, and then we have to read, well, if that's not working, continue to move the ball, find the next action. Uh, it's not necessarily a play. It's the play after the play. Um, and I think that's where we have to continue to, you know, keep energy in it. And once that ball sticks, it, it, it's really tough for us to, to score. All right, Coach, we'll head over to Zoom. Chris Miller. Hey, Wes, KCP was clearly frustrated after the game against Houston and mentioned that there are some guys on the roster that don't know the plays. Is that even possible 71 games in? And is that even correctable for the final games this year? Oh, uh, yeah, it, it is correctable. And yeah, there are some guys who have struggled. You know, once again, you know, KP hasn't played a lot with us. So, you know, Ish has not played a lot with us. Sato has not played a lot with us. So you, there are some, you know, miscues. That's, that's just part of it. We've kind of had to deal with that throughout the season, you know, through the reintegration of Rui and, and TB, and through the, you know, the trade scenario that we saw uh, during the COVID, and you had, you know, six or eight different bodies in here in a matter of 10 days. So all of that, um, it, it happens, you know, it's not ideal, but trying to make sure that we continue to, to drill it, uh, you know, with 510 script, you know, script versus coaches, just get a feel for how teams are guarding us. All those, you know, layers help, but you cannot get enough uh, repetition. And I think that's important, you know, regardless of it's 11 games or, you know, just a week, we have to continue to hit guys and, and make sure we can stay organized. And in terms of guarding your yard, um, that, that's a pride thing. Um, how, how important is that part of it, of just pride at this point of the year of just competing at the highest level? That's a big piece, you know, and overall, I would, I think our guys have been very competitive. Um, I think at, at times we, we don't have necessarily the details. Um, and we saw, you know, probably second half, fourth quarter, um, when, you're, when you're dealing with teams that are, you know, dynamic in nature or really good individual one-on-one -on -one players, um, if we don't establish a defensive tone early, uh, they're going to throw a couple shots in and all of a sudden they're shooting into a big basket. Now it's, uh, now it's really tough. Um, you know, they made some tough step back individual plays, which uh, it's tough for anyone to guard. It wasn't necessarily at the rim or in our paint, but, you know, we allowed that early, allowed them to play with a level of comfort. And uh, now it's, it's tough to shut off. Christos? Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how could you explain the ups and downs uh, of your team game by game? After the game against the Lakers, for example, had a, a great first half and a bad second half against the Rockets. How could you explain that? Well, it's, it's something we're, we're trying to figure out. You know, we've seen this at times throughout the season. That's been the messaging all year. How do we find ways to sustain our play? Um, and that's not just, you know, first half, second half. Sometimes it's a three or four minute stretch within a quarter where, um, you know, in particular the other night against Houston, I thought offensively we got a rhythm early um, and we kind of let our foot off the gas thinking that we could just kind of play it out. And that's the wrong team to, and certainly the wrong approach. Uh, that team plays free and easy for 48 minutes. And once they got a little momentum, um, we gave them life. Um, they stole that, you know, momentum from us. And now it, it, it just snowballed. So, you know, can we, can we find ways to make sure that doesn't happen? It doesn't mean it's, we're going to make open threes. It doesn't make mean our offense is going to click, but, um, how do we set a tone, you know, especially on the defensive end early and try to take teams away from what, you know, what they're trying to do? And also for, for the next games until the end of the regular season in the next 11 games, what do you expect to see and what type of, what kind of foundation would you would like to build on those 11 games? Well, the messaging is, you know, regardless of win loss, you know, every time we step between the lines, you know, those are valuable minutes, uh, collectively, individually, um, and we can't afford to waste those minutes. You know, I think it's, it's easy to say, well, you know, we're, we're in this spot or the seating, this and that. You can't get consumed with that. 
we built this situation and we're, we're, we have to uh, find ways to continue to get something out of it. You know, with, with 11 games to play, those are valuable minutes for all of us. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. Let's not waste opportunities, you know, when we, when we, get, out, when we get out there.